Welcome to another Last Hour Bereans, Last Days Update, where we discuss Bible prophecy, expose the wolves and false teachings that have crept into the church, declaring the soon return of the Lord, first for his church in the air, and then with his church at the end of the tribulation. Look up for our redemption draws nigh. Welcome, everyone, to another LHB Last Days Update with Chris Lewis and Sam. You heard that right. Sam <laughs> is now officially part of the team on the Last Days Update. So, uh, you know what? Uh, let's give Sam a hand clap. <laughs> awesome. Do we have a hand clap thing down here? I'm not going to look for it right now. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I welcome you guys. Uh, if you're new to our channel, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. That way, every time we upload a video, you guys are notified. Don't forget to like and share the video and also comment as this helps uh, with the YouTube algorithms and all of that good stuff. Um, but before we begin, Sam, the newest member to the team, why don't you say hello to the LHB family? Hi guys, I hope you're all having a good day and I hope that we can encourage you with this video. Amen, Brother Louie. I'd like to welcome everyone and everyone back that's watching, that keeps watching our videos. We thank you. We thank you for your comment uh, because we, it just means so much to us when, when it, it, we, under, we, we know that it meant something to someone else and it was God doing it. It wasn't us. This is our God wanting that person to hear that part. He just happens to bless us uh, and use us. Amen, amen. And again, we you know we've had a few new uh, members join over the last few days, uh, so we welcome you and we thank you for joining the LHB family. All right, so today we're going to be continuing uh, on our journey through the future promises for the saints. The future promises for the saints. Now, we already went over the rapture. We went over the overcomers. We went over the glorified body, and now. We're coming to the end of it, and this is part one on the millennium. Now, for those of you who've never heard that term before, it means 1,000 years, and we find that in Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. And it says this, And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Now, millennium, okay, the, you, you get 1,000 years from it because milli means 1,000 and annum means years. You just put them together and you get 1,000 years. That's, what they, uh, that's where we get that word from. Now, um, Sam, this world we're living in right now uh, is so far away from what we're going to be talking about. I mean, mm -hmm. what, are, what are some examples like in this world right now that we know we're not in paradise? Um, the fact that we have, I mean, diseases, that wasn't an original thing. Like in the Garden of Eden, there was no disease. And it's going to go back to that during the millennial. We won't have disease. Um I'm, we're definitely in a fallen world, and you can see that we age. That's not <laughs> that's not uh, natural. That's because of sin, and so these things are going to be taken away during the millennium. Amen. And brother Lewis, you know, we also call this the millennial reign of Christ. Now uh, we have to differentiate. This is not the eternal reign of Christ because this is only for a set period of a thousand years. After the thousand years, he gets recommissioned again to rule for eternity, and and all rule all earthly rule will be put down. But um, why is it called the millennial reign of Christ? Is he going to set up the kingdom, or are we going to set up the kingdom for him? Well, he's going to uh, set up this kingdom. He's going to sit uh, on the throne of David uh, in, you know, in Jerusalem. He's going to be physically okay, in his God state, okay, mm -hmm. because we say that. okay. He's going to reign uh, from Jerusalem. The whole world will know that he reigns. And, and, and part of this has to do with the fact that uh, the land that was promised to, to Abraham in uh, Genesis 15, uh, 18, and to what given to Moses in Numbers 34, okay, the Jews have never, ever uh, had 
fully control of the land that was promised them during mm -hmm. Solomon's reign. It was the biggest uh, reign that they had, but it still is not even close because the word says it'll go all the way to the uh, river Euphrates, and we know that that's Iraq right now. So uh, 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 the promises that were made to Israel uh, will be fulfilled in this reign. Uh, you know, we're going to talk about everything that's going to be happening, and 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 this is a. Uh, you, you'll be surprised. A lot of people will be surprised what it says about this this time. Amen. And here's another thing. People kind of, uh, even Christians, they don't think about. Um, if you ask them when the millennium will start, they say immediately at the second coming. But that's not true. There's a 75-day gap that happens. And you can find that in Daniel. Um, you know, uh, for the, there's going to be 30 days for the cleansing of the temple and 45 days for the sheep and goat judgment. When Christ mm -hmm. comes back, there's going to be the sheep and goats. So you got to fit that in somewhere. And that's the 75 day period because it says here in Daniel 12, verse 11. And from that time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination that makes desolate set up. That's when the Antichrist goes in there and declares himself God. There shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days, uh, 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 one thousand two hundred and ninety days. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the. 1,335 days, right? So that's that, I think that 30-day uh, 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 period there. And then you have another one where it's talking about 1,260 days. So you add 1,260 plus 30, that's uh, 1,290. Then you had, add uh, 45 to the 1,290, and you get the 1,335. So the Bible's so accurate that mm -hmm. it tells you the exact time uh, when this is going to take place. And this is such an amazing thing because the Bible is the only book that dares to make uh, future promises, right, Sam? It is because uh, God obviously knows what's going to happen in the future, so He can say He can tell us exactly what's going to happen, and He's not going to be wrong. Other, you know, religious books they don't try to predict what's going to happen in the future, or if they do, they're flat out wrong. <laughs> so, <laughs> whereas the Bible, I mean, just look at the Jews; they were, um, you know everywhere and then you know europe and other countries and then israel was no longer a country and then after world war ii the jews started going back to their land and then israel became a country in 1947 right? yeah yeah um and so and god said that god said that the jews were gonna be dispersed and they were gonna go back to the land i think I don't remember where it is, but it even says that the Hebrew language will be still a language. It will, <laughs> it won't, you know, fade away. It will still be, and it is. And you know what's amazing about that, Sam, is that it's it, God says that no more will you say that God has gathered uh, uh, gathered you from Egypt, because he'll mm -hmm. say you you'll be scattered to the four corners of the world. So basically, this is way beyond Egypt. So God's yeah. gonna, you know, uh, scatter you. That, that, they called the Jews the wandering Jews for a long time. Mm -hmm. because they were in everybody else's culture, everybody else's country, except for their own. But what's amazing about that is you've never seen a Canaanite, a Hittite, a Hivite, none of them. <laughs> once you're wiped out, even the Mayan culture, once you're wiped out, there's no coming back. And not only coming back, but retaining your language and your mm -hmm. culture. That's a miracle all by itself. Right, Brother Lewis? Um, yeah. You know, it's... Being God's people, uh, Satan has always hated them from the beginning. Um, mm -hmm. The empires that were, uh, you know, like uh, the Roman Empire, we, we go back to Nebuchadnezzar, we go back to Alexander the Great. Uh, those were created I, literally to destroy the uh, Jewish people. Um, mm -hmm. and, and God did not allow it because he made a promise to them. Yes, they will be scattered. Um, part of it is because of their unbelief. Um, but he will bring them back. And this is the time when he will bring them back. Uh, we're going to read um, later on. And they will see him as who he is. They're going to realize that it was him, Jesus, who was put on the cross. That there was a, their Messiah. They, they, they misunderstood. They were misled into uh, what happened. But they will know that it was him who they pierced. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, the millennium is going to be awesome on so many levels because... Initially, it's going to be only believers going in to this mm -hmm. glorious kingdom. And like Brother Lewis says, this is mainly 
for the Jews to receive all the promises God made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He has to fulfill those promises to them. And mm -hmm. um, if not, he will be found a liar, right? And, and Satan can accuse him. Say, hey, mm -hmm. if you, you can't judge me because you're a liar just like me. That's never going to happen. God is not a man that he should lie, the Bible says, and he will honor and keep his word. And Satan just has to deal with it because he can't get out from under God's prophecies. He knows that. Um, mm -hmm. I think he may be a little bit deluded because he actually thinks, still thinks he could win in some kind of weird way. You know, uh, yeah, that's how deluded he is. Um, but yeah, in, in um, Revelation chapter uh, twelve, verse six, it talks about the uh, one thousand two hundred and three score days, which is you know the the uh, I think it's the twelve ninety or twelve sixty days. It says, and the woman, which is Israel, fled into the wilderness where she shall, uh, where she hath a place prepared of God. We believe that's Petra, that mm -hmm. they should feed her there 1,203 square days. Now, this goes in line with the end of the tribulation and uh, the days that will be lasting before the second coming and all of that. And then the sheep and goat judgments of the temple being planned. And then those who make it through the sheep and goat judgments, they will be the ones going into the millennium now sam you know we i wanted to do some conditions of the millennium next week but i guess i could go into some of them now because we kind of covered the basics pretty fast okay now it's the, I, I want you to read if you get your bible there uh go to ezekiel chapter 37 don't worry ezekiel. take it yeah 37 ezekiel what 37 starting at verse 24 and read to verse 27 okay and uh, the title of this is David shall be prince over Israel under the rulership of Jesus. So David, my servant, shall be king over them, and they shall all have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe, and observe my statutes and do them. Then they shall dwell in the land that I have given to Jacob, my servant, where your fathers dwelt, and they shall all or they shall dwell there. They, their children and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be the, shall be their prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them, and it shall be an everlasting covenant with them. I will establish them and multiply them, and I will set my sanctuary in their midst forever. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Indeed, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. All right. So that, you know, uh, Brother Lewis, clearly, clearly God is saying that David is going to be his prince, uh, uh, and he's going to be ruling from Jerusalem. Now, this is not a reincarnation of David or mm -hmm. what do you call it, uh, you know, whatever the else, you know, that got into a new body kind of day. This is the same David, same spirit and soul in a glorified body, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and, and, you know, it says uh, he shall be king over them, and they shall have one shepherd. Talk about uh, Christ, uh, and because Christ will be ruled, but and David will be king uh, over, you know, mm -hmm. so um, Jesus is the king of kings. So, you know, mm -hmm. David can be king, but he's under the king of kings. So he will rule. And this is to for, for the Jewish people, because it was a promise that was made to them that, you know, David would sit on the throne. So this is mm -hmm. for them. Um, but we will be there because it mentions princes. Um, and, and that's us. We will also be there uh, ruling over. Um, whatever it is that we rule over. Now, we were talking beforehand about, uh, you know, wanting to go to Jerusalem, and everyone wants to go to Jerusalem. And the Millennium Kingdom will be in Jerusalem, and we're going to mm -hmm. see, uh, we can get a bird's eye view of the whole thing. We are going to go, every Christian will see Jerusalem, and they will see Christ ruling from Jerusalem. Right, and, um, you know, we're going to be ruling our, our central headquarters, will be the new Jerusalem, the heavenly city, mm -hmm. which I personally believe will be hovering somewhere over the Earth's atmosphere at first, and, and then it'll land here on Earth after the mm -hmm. millennium, after the Great White Throne Judgment. Um, but yeah, it'll be it'll be clearly seen by people, you know, and you know it'll be cool if it was hovering over the earthly Jerusalem, which would have been <laughs> which would be awesome. The Bible doesn't say that. This is just a, you know a hunch of mine, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. But um, that that'll be cool. So we're gonna be uh, centralized there and uh what a blessing that's going to be okay lewis 
Uh, go to uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 65, verse 24, and read that. It's really small scripture, uh, but this is a uh, pretty cool thing. The Lord will answer our prayers before we finish asking. Isaiah 65, verse 24. Isaiah 65, 24. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer, and while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Man, oh man, this is an awesome, awesome, awesome promise. I mean, th think about it, Sam. You're thinking of a prayer. You're, you're thinking of asking the Lord for something. And before you even finish that thought, before you utter it out of your mouth, it's already there in front of you. How awesome is that? That's amazing. And it just shows the great love of God that before we're even done saying what we want, he's like, here you go. <laughs> I already yes. have it for you. <laughs> now, 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 what's amazing, uh, Brother Lewis, that sounds like a very loving father, doesn't it? It, it, it is. And, and for those of us have, that have children, we have experiences when they ask for something and we know what they're going to ask for. And before they finish, we actually give it. It's, I already have it for you. Uh, and, and you can see the expression on their face. It goes, it, you can't even describe it uh, because it's, it's, it's like, how did you know now, you know, uh, our grandson, John, is 11 years old, and this is his, one of his phrases. How did you guys know that? And, and, and <laughs> it's the same thing. It's the same thing that, you know, we're going to get what we want, what we pray for, okay, uh, mm -hmm. before we finish. And, you know, what's amazing is we're not going to be asking for selfish things because we're going to be in mm -hmm. glorified bodies. So it's not, we're not going to ask for something that's going to offend God or, you know, be, you know, just selfish. It's going to be something that he, that's going to glorify him 100% of the time. And glorifying him will actually bring us pleasure and joy. This is, you know, we, we, it's hard to understand that in this fallen flesh, but that's how it's going to be. Now, um, th this is another one. This is another one, which is I love this. People will live the entire millennium. And mm -hmm. those yeah. born during this time will have 100 years to get saved. If they refuse, they will be damned by their 100th birthday and um, some will die. Mm -hmm. Those who die will be considered infants at the age of uh, 100. Now, I want you, Sam, to go to Isaiah 65 and read verse 20. Okay. No more shall an infant from there live but a few days, nor an old man who has not fulfilled his days. For the child shall die 100 years old, but the sinner being 100 years old shall be accursed. Now, wait a minute. You're telling me there's going to be sinners in the millennium? Say it ain't so. Well, <laughs> uh, Brother Lewis, clearly, clearly God says there's going to be sin and death in the mm -hmm. millennium, right? Correct. Everyone that goes into the millennium will be saved. Okay. These are the children of the people that marry and uh, have mm -hmm. children after it started. And they will have to make their own decisions. Um, and we know because once uh, Satan, Satan is bound for this thousand years. Okay. Uh, he's, he's been chained up by Michael. Mm -hmm. And when he's released, he will have followers. So, yes, there will be sinners on earth. Um, and, the, and but they'll be kept in check, and uh, like we read here, um, you, you know, they 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 once you get to 100 and you're a sinner, uh, your life is over. Well, mm -hmm. this is what you know, we, we want to prove things with scripture. This is not just coming off of the top of our heads. How do you know that God's going to give you 100 years and then after that? Well, we just read it, we just yeah. read it, um, you know, um, that it says, for the child, you'll be considered a child. Yeah. When you die at 100 years old. And then it says, but the sinner being 100 years old shall be accursed. So yeah. number one, he's telling you at 100 years old, you're going to be a child. But then only sinners will die at 100 years old. Only sinners mm -hmm. will be accursed. So everyone else will be living the entire millennium. They, they won't even see physical death. They'll get older, mm -hmm. but they'll, they'll age very, very slowly. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you'll probably look like you're in your 20s when you're like maybe... 350 years old, right? You, 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 you look like you're in your teens probably by that time. You're very fertile, very youthful, very energetic. By the time we get to 900 something, yeah, you probably need a cane by then, right? But <laughs> but it, it's well beyond. And, and by the way, those of us in glorified bodies won't even have to worry about this age at all. If we're going to be in our prime, 
since the rapture. So praise God that we're already saved on this side of the, everything, right? Now, this goes to, I'm going to read Matthew chapter 8, verse 12, because this backs up what Brother Lewis just said about uh, children having to accept the Lord. Uh, now, Jesus said this himself. He says, but the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. Mm -hmm. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, who are these children of the kingdom? Think about what he just said and think about what we just read about sinners in the millennium. The millennium is the millennial kingdom of Christ. This is the same kingdom he's talking about that the children, like Lewis says, those born to believing parents that refuse Christ, they will be cast out in the outer darkness. Mm -hmm. That's kind of terrifying, don't you think, Sam? It is, because they were literally born into the kingdom. Obviously, that doesn't mean that they were Christians. Like, if you're born into a Christian family now, that doesn't mean that you're a Christian, because you have to believe on Christ for yourself. And so, these people, obviously, they choose not to believe in Christ, and so then they have to pay for their own sin, which is death. Amen. And you know, uh, Brother Lewis, none of us could get into heaven or the millennial kingdom or, you know, or into uh, being adopted as God's child on our parents' righteousness, right? We have to, we have to go in the same way our parents did. Uh, there's a saying that says, God has no grandchildren. He only has children. Mm -hmm. And that's a true saying, isn't it? It, it is. And, and we know because this, uh, today there's a lot of uh, um, couples that are Christians and their children have chosen not to follow them and accept mm -hmm. uh, Jesus' uh, sacrifice on the cross uh, for the, for their forgiveness of their sins. So the parents are not held responsible because this is an individual choice that had, mm -hmm. had to be, Adam and Eve made, had to make it, and the last person that is born on this earth has to make it. Uh, so it's individual. No one, you cannot inherit salvation. We're not Catholics. We don't inherit <laughs> salvation okay so it's an individual and, and you have a hundred years in the millennium to decide mm -hmm. and I, 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 um, but it doesn't mean that child is a like a three-year-old because mm -hmm. you know Solomon uh, when when God asked him you know what what he wanted he says you know I'm a child it doesn't he was 40 years old he was just saying Un, you know, unwise in, in, in the ways of things and not really knowing everything, but knowing enough to be able to make a decision whether Christ will be your savior or you're not, you're go not going to last over 100 years. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is that um, Catholics mm -hmm. are not Christians? <laughs> <laughs> is that what you're saying? Uh, that's all I got from that whole thing you just said. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, guys that are watching, uh, Lewis and I are former Catholics. That's why we could go ahead and say that. Um, <laughs> but it's amazing uh, how they think they can actually inherit and work their way into heaven. And that's kind of tragic because oh, dear. what a deception. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, Sam. Be, be very uh, thankful that you didn't have to go through that cult. Uh, yes, I am thankful. <laughs> <laughs> now, OK, this is another one. And we'll probably end on this one. Um, okay, because uh, uh, next week we want to go into the uh, the Lord ruling with a rod of iron and all of that, mm -hmm. which means no voting, by the way. Um, so, <laughs> Isaiah. That's a good thing. I'm tired of these ads. <laughs> I know, I know. Isaiah, <laughs> Isaiah 30, verse 26. Uh, this talks about uh, uh, it will be daytime all the time, even at midnight. Isaiah 30, verse 26. Go for it when you're ready. Moreover, the light of the moon will be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun will be sevenfold, as the light of seven days. And the day that the Lord binds up the bruise of his people and heals the stroke of their wound. All right, clearly, this is talking about the millennium. All right, mm -hmm. where he binds the breach of his people, he heals them. Okay, he's mm -hmm. talking about Israel. Israel will be the highest location on planet Earth because a global earthquake will flatten every other area and raise up Jerusalem. So it's literally going to be elevated and every other nation flattened out. So you talk about uh, a clean slate. It's going to be a clean slate on planet Earth you know, to rebuild, you know. But it, it says here, and what you just read, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold, even brighter than it is today, mm -hmm. as the light of seven days combined into one. Now, why is it going to happen? 
Brother Lewis, this, this is why I believe the heavenly city is going to be hovering above the earth. The brilliance from the heavenly city where Christ's throne is and the light coming from him supercharges the sun, which causes it to be seven times, you know, hot, brighter. I don't know, hotter. And I don't think we're going to feel the heat. But why would the moon be so bright? Because it what? Because it reflects the sun. It reflects the sun. So at midnight, it's going to be uh, daytime. Now, people will probably wonder, how in the world are we going to be able to get to sleep? <laughs> well... You know, when you have entered into Christ's rest, okay, there's no problem sleeping in a, with a bright sun in your eyes. It's not going to be like today where you need everything dark and your eyes covered and, you know, you're going to be able to sleep peacefully no matter what. And by the way, those in glorified bodies won't even need to sleep, right? So, Sam, okay, so what are your final words on the intro to the millennium so people, uh, young people could hear it from you? Well, the millennium is for the Jews and then for the believers in Christ. And if you want to be there, you have to believe in Christ. And if you haven't believed in Christ, then you, you need to do that now because there's no guarantee that you would survive um, during the tribulation or that you would accept Christ during the tribulation. So if you want to have that perfect rest that Chris was talking about, then you need to become a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Actually, that's very excellent. Okay. <laughs> now, uh, uh, Brother Lewis, Sam briefly mentioned it, but um, what's the gospel? How do I, how do I enter into this? Because, by the way, uh, the Jews that are going to be in the millennium are going to be saved. They're not mm -hmm. just unbelieving Jews. They're going to be mm -hmm. everybody in the millennium, uh, like Lewis said earlier, will enter in as believers. Mm -hmm. It's only the children that are born to these believers that will rebel. Now, Brother Lewis... How does one even get into the millennium and participate? Well, first of all, we have to realize that we are sinners. In the eyes of God, okay, who's holy, we are sinners. We, we break every one of his laws and his commandments. Uh, we continuously do things that we want to do that pleasure us without even thinking about him and what he wants for us. The problem is that people think that his laws are what the word says grievous but they're not if we were to understand and as christians we do that if we follow what he wants us to to do we will be blessed that's how he blesses us and 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 once you realize you're a sinner and you need someone to pay for your sins because we cannot then you have to look to god because only god can forgive sins so this is where jesus came in he became a man because a man has to pay for the sins, but it has to be a man and God at the same time. And this was Jesus, 100% man, 100% God. And he took all the sins of the world from the beginning to the end upon his shoulders so we could be forgiven. So only Jesus can forgive your sins, and you have to go to him with an open heart, and he will save you. Says, you know, believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. That's right. And um, Jesus is the perfect union of God and man. Isn't that amazing? That it's we only have peace through him. We have peace with God through him. Fallen man, holy God, Jesus in the middle, uniting us. That's amazing. He, you know, he is the God man. You know, so guys, listen, you know, if you've been hearing us, and this is the most important part of the uh, program, by the way, everything else is extra. That's just that's just extra topping on the pizza. You know what I mean? Uh, you want to be part of God's family. Um, like Sam said, there's no guarantee you're going to make it through the tribulation. Well, even worse, there's no guarantee you'll make it through the next five minutes right mm -hmm. now. So, um, you know, because 150,000 people die every 24 hours of something. That's a lot of people every day. And one of these days is going to be you. Now, you want to meet the Lord as Savior and not judge. OK, you want to meet him as savior, as father. Right. Because that way, you know, you're guaranteed a place in his kingdom forever and never to be removed again. And now, my friends, we thank you for joining us again. And um, until next time, look up. Our redemption draws near. Maranatha and God bless. I love doing that. All right. <laughs> Take care, guys. I couldn't tell. <laughs>